Well, in the beginning of the session, uh, I gave you the details of the syllabus. I handed over the copy of syllabus to all of you uh, and also handed over you the metabolic, uh, the uh, uh, detail of uh, the number of questions coming from each topic and that is with you and if you look there you will find that uh, the carbohydrate metabolism is carrying a lot of weightage. I would like to give you the overview of the carbohydrate metabolism. The, as you know, the metabolism is the term used to describe the interconvention of chemical compounds in the body. The pathway taken by individual molecules, their interrelationship and the mechanism that regulates the flow of the metabolites through the pathway. If we divide this metabolic pathway, we can say there are three types of metabolic pathway that is one, number one, that is anabolic pathway, which are those involved in the synthesis of larger and more complex compounds from the smaller precursors. For example, the synthesis of protein from amino acid and the synthesis of reserve of triglycerol and glycogen. Then there is another pathway that is the catabolic pathway which are involved in the metabolism and the breakdown of the larger molecule. The word catabolism itself is ex explanatory that is telling the breakdown of the larger molecules commonly involved oxidative reactions. Then there is another type of pathway in the metabolism that is the amphibolic pathway which occurs at the cross roads of the metabolism where different metabolisms crossing each other that is the amphibolic pathway acting as a linkage between the anabolic and the catabolic pathway. So I have told you three pathways to understand this I would like you to go to the metabolic map. I have already told you that this metabolic map is very important to understand the metabolic, different metabolic pathways, the carbohydrate metabolism, the protein metabolism, the lipid metabolism. And this metabolic map is given on page number 92 of the Lippincott and very clearly that has been mentioned here if you look carefully on this metabolic map you will see that there are three different colors of this metabolic map and that is one is in the blue color the uh, second one is in brown and the third one is in green. You see, no, if you understand this metabolic map, this is very important to understand how the different metabolic pathways they are going on and where they are interacting with each, with each other. If you understand it, you will be not in any problem to go through for this metabolic uh, uh, understanding. If you look clearly, if you look that the blue path, that is all the reactions given in the metabolic map in the blue wordings and blue arrows and blue colors, that is basically the carbohydrate metabolism. And in this metabolic pathway, carbohydrate metabolism, the, there are, the, the, the map has indicated the glycolysis. If you look in the center, there is mentioned 
glycolysis clearly written glycolysis and this glycolysis is the hub of you can call it it is the hub of carbohydrate metabolism and the end product here is the pyruvate and that pyruvate is the you can stay, say it is a form of stage which has been now set for the further breakdown of the molecules and if you look that pyruvate is then further processing and further moving towards the formation of acetyl-CoA and now the acetyl-CoA is that substrate that will enter into a very important cycle that is the TCA cycle it is written there tricarboxylic acid cycle and it is that cycle where the major breakdown takes place it is the main catabolic where the, the reactions are taking place and TCA cycle is that place where maximum number of ATPs are formed. If you look, there are certain arrows which are straight and some arrows which are curved. The straight arrows indicates that this reaction is going on under the same enzyme whereas the arrows which are curved that indicates that different enzymes are used there different enzymes are involved there very interesting that if you look that brown color on the map the brown color reactions this is all your lipid or fat metabolism right starting from triglycerol and then going to fatty acid fatty acid to fatty acyl coa then malonic acid malonyl coa and malonyl coa then ultimately going into acetyl coa and you have noticed that in the case of carbohydrate metabolism, the pyruvate is further moving for further breakdown to acetyl OA. So I can now say that these two metabolisms they are ultimately coming to the point that is acetyl OA. And if you look further, that uh, there is also beta hydroxybutyrates converting into acetates and these acetates with the reversible reactions they are also converting into acetyl CoA. So these are different forms which are concerned with the triglycerol synthesis and degradation. They are ultimately broken down, they are further coming to the that is known as that you can call it that they are going through the process of the catabolism and coming to a point that is acetyl CoA. If you look into the map, there is there are green reactions, and these green reactions are all related to the protein metabolism. You, know, very, you can very easily find out that there is a urea cycle mentioned here and the, the products of the urea cycle that's starting from ammonia and carbon dioxide. That ammonia and carbon dioxide, I'm talking of the green color reactions now, look, in, look towards the green color reactions in the map. Ammonia carbon dioxide, they form carbomonyl phosphate and that phosphate is then converted into citrulline and that is 
one of the one of the product one of the component of the urea cycle and that citrulline then art goes into arginosuccinate with the combination of aspartate and arginine then there is formation of arginine and there is formation of urea and ornithine and that again enter into the citrulline if you look that arginosuccinate is entering into tca cycle via fumarate it's very clearly mentioned now three places where the protein breakdown components they enter into tca cycle which is the main cycle where the breakdown of the molecule takes place to produce the num maximum number of the atps and if you look then the separate amino um, the amino acid, the protein amino acids they are phenyl tyrosine and uh, that is also entering in tca cycle at the place of fumarate and there is aspartate that is entering into tca cycle at the place of oxaloacetate and then that further is breaking goes into the breakdown to produce the maximum number of the ATPs. So this map is very important. You should always keep this map into your mind while going through the metabolic pathway. Not only carbohydrate metabolism, what I am talking today, but also when you are going to study the protein metabolism, that map should be before you because it will give you a very good idea that how different reactions are taking place the reversible or irreversible and at what place these the broken down the molecules entering into TC cycle similarly you can triglycerol break down the lipid break down that will also is very clearly mentioned so always while studying metabolism keep this map before your eyes and whenever you start please open the book page number 92 of the Lippincott that map is very clearly is given there if you will understand this map it will be very easy for you to understand the three metabolic pathways and mind it that these three metabolic pathways are the major shareholder of marks in your University of Health Sciences examination. Going through that uh, the introduction and telling you about the metabolic map in view journal view, I would like to talk to you how the metabolism uh, process is taking place and we can divide this metabolic pathways into three steps three stages very clearly mentioned again in the book of Lippincott at the page number 93 you can open your book you can see at the page number 93 of the Lippincott if you look at it, that uh, all the proteins the carbohydrate and fats these are the nutrients which are available for the breakdown in the body for the metabolic pathways and how this stage one proceeds there is hydrolysis of complex molecule to their component building blocks look on that the protein after going through digestion absorption their hydrolysis they convert it into amino acids which is mentioned here look at the carbohydrates after digestion absorption they are converted into monosaccharides and similarly the fat after going through 
the process that stage one, of stage one digestion and absorption they are converted into glycerol fatty acids now well done we have now reached at the stage number two and at the stage number two there is conversion of the building blocks to acetyl CoA. If you look at that, look this picture, the amino acids converting into acetyl CoA, the monosaccharides converting into acetyl CoA, the glycerol fatty acids converting into acetyl CoA. This is what I told you while talking of the metabolic map. Where I, there I clearly I told you that in the case of the carbohydrate metabolism that glucose pyruvate pyruvate then converted into acetyl CoA similarly different amino acids urea cycle they are converted into converting into acetyl CoA and glycerol fatty acids converted into acetyl CoA acetyl CoA is the stage which is now available and it will be then going to a third stage that is the complete oxidation that is the oxidation of acetyl CoA via TCA cycle and oxidative phosphorylation will be there and there will be the formation of ATPs and carbon dioxide of course is one of the product there. So very clearly that book has mentioned and these three stages are very important and to understand the, the metabolism stage one, stage two and stage three. Now this was the catabolic pathway. If we go of the anabolic pathway, so very clearly the wording itself is telling it's the anabolic deformation. We have to go reverse now. If we want to get back to the glucose, let's say, let's say we want to get the glucose from the acetyl CoA or it will now, the reaction will go back and that will formation, that will lead to the formation of the glucose. And what when happens this? In the case of the sphere, when the food is not available, and uh, in the case of uh, there is, a, let's say, um, you are in fasting stage from last 12 to 14, 15 hours, and uh, your body sugar level is dropped. As you know, sugar level is very important, glucose level is very important for the normal function of your brain and other organs. So, body has got the system to provide a cane glucose and that will be the reverse reactions as I told you and these reactions will go back, they will move backward and will be responsible to produce the, the glucose. Or this is one example I am quoting you, similarly there are other examples. So, this is the anabolic part anabolic pathway, the formation of the small the component from the, the intermediates and that will lead to the, the anabolic pathway. So these two pathways, the catabolic and anabolic pathway and the stages in the catabolic pathway I have told you. The next now is transport now that's coming to the point now the carbohydrate metabolism what is uh, I wanted to talk and before that I have given you an overall view that uh, transport of the glucose now when the glucose is available after the breakdown of the carbohydrate taken in the diet going through the digestion process and absorption and ultimately glucose is produced that glucose is to now enter into the cell for further breakdown. And what is the purpose of that breakdown? One of the purpose is to produce the ATPs. 
then there are many other functions, there are many other uh, use of that good growth, but I am talking particularly here of that. The glucose is transported into the cell by two mechanisms. One is sodium independent facilitated diffusion transport system and other is the that is sodium monosaccharide system. Look at this diagram. It is given on page 97 of the Lippincott book. I always appreciate this diagram to understand how the glucose is transported into the cell. Look, one by one, the glucose that is given with, with the six carbon atom mentioning that is indicating is arrow is indicating there and there are certain glucose transporters in the cell membrane. These glucose transporters, you look into the configuration, the shape, how these transporters and uh, uh, they, are, they are acting. If you look, it's very interesting to see that this transporter or the receptor is open at the mouth and closed at the tongue. Look there. Now, the glucose molecule, actually I will, I will call it to understand, it is a trap. The trap has been created. The glucose definitely will go enter into that transporter and when that glucose is trapped, you see what is happening. The upper port part of that transporter which was previously open now in the next stage has been dropped back. Look here, that has been dropped back here. That has been closed. Look here, that has been closed. And now the lower end of that is open. And this is how the glucose will be entering into the cell or well, that the cell membrane. So now there are different type of the transporters, glucose transporters and there are 14 in number 1, 4 number glucose transporter. You can call it GLUT, glucose transporter number 1 to 14. There are, there are 14 glucose transporter system GLUT 1 to GLUT 14. These transporters they are present in the membrane in two conformational states that as I have told you that is first in different form then second different form. Now these glucose transporters they are gene expression, they have got the, the tissue specificity of these is the glucose transporters display tissue specific pattern of expression. Very in interesting. For example, GLUT3 is the primary glucose transporter in neurons, and particularly for that, whereas GLUT1 is abundant in erythrocytes and blood brain barrier but low in adult muscles and where GLUT4 is abundant in adipose tissue and skeletal muscles. So there are specific. Now this my whole discussion is indicating that these glucose transporters from 1 to 14, they are also specific for different organs. Now, the specific function of GL2, GLUT, I do, that is also specific. For example, GLUT1, GLUT3, and GLUT4, 
they are primarily involved in glucose uptake from the blood. I repeat it. GLUT1, GLUT3, GLUT4, they are primarily involved in glucose uptake from the blood. In opposite to that, glucose transporter number 2, which is found in the liver and kidney, can either transport glucose into these cells when blood glucose levels are high or transport glucose from these cells when blood glucose levels are low. For example, I told you in fasting. GLUT is found in pancreatic beta cells and uh, this is the water specification of these uh, all, all these transporters. Now I will be going further that is the overview of the glycolysis. And uh, in that, if you look on this uh, map, uh, this diagram, it is given on page 96 of your Lippincott book. Page number 96 of the Lippincott. You see, glucose is being converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And here is the point, very important place where there are certain university questions that uh, here two enzymes are involved that is glucokinase and hexokinase and we have to tell why these two enzymes are there taking place and this glucose 6-phosphate is then formed and this glucose 6-phosphate after going through another reaction that I will talk to you later when talk, considering talking about individual reactions. I will be discussing the reaction individually also. That glucose 6-phosphate is converted into that is fructose 6-phosphate. It is reversible reaction. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is formed and this glucose 1,6-bisphosphate is then converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, reversible reaction. And on one hand, this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. On the other hand, it is also conversion taking place in dihyde to oxy acetone phosphate. And moving further, 1,3-bisphosphate glycerate is then 3-phosphoglycerate, all these reversible reactions, 3-phosphoglycerate, 2-phosphoglycerate, and 2-phosphoglycerates then converted into phosphoemol pyruvate. And then this pyruvate formation is there and there is indication of, if you look, there is NAD and that is converted to NADH, then that is passing through oxidative phosphorylation here, NAD, NADH, that is going to the ox oxidative phosphorylation and you have gone through this oxidative phosphorylation in detail, that will be the place where ATP formation will be taking place. Now this pyruvate formation is no, a very important point I am going to talk. This pyruvate formation is under the influence of oxygen and the whole process is taking place when oxygen is available and in those cells where oxygen is available. So this will be known as the aerobic glycolysis. We call it aerobic glycolysis because it is taking place 
in which is going on in the presence of oxygen in those cells where oxygen is available, the pyruvate formation taking place, and this is known as the aerobic glycolysis. Now moving towards that is the indication of C, that is the there is also pyruvate formation, but that is if you look at the end, the pyruvate is converted into lactate and this is happening this is the place this is why that is being converted into lactate because there is no presence of oxygen certain cells though don't, don't have those don't have oxygen there so in that case lactate formation is taking place they do also produce it but this is the sequence is different and this is how this uh, uh, glycolysis and that glycolysis which is taking place in the absence of the oxygen is known as the anabolic that is the uh, anaerobic that is known as the anaerobic glycolysis this is anaerobic glycolysis so glycolysis of two types one is the aerobic glycolysis and other is the anaerobic glycolysis. These are the two different types of the glycolysis. I, as, as I was talking to you that uh, pyruvate is the stage of uh, where they uh, when talking of the carbohydrate metabolism and there is in the presence of oxygen the pyruvate formation is there and you now this pyruvate there is university question always and many times this question is there in the university you can see from the university papers that once the pyruvate is formed what is the fate of the pyruvate now we have to talk of the fate of the pyruvate and this chart on page 106 of your book Lippincott book is very clearly mentioning the fate of pyruvate once formed and I told you by talking of the glycolysis the one fate in anaerobic glycolysis is the lactate formation there is, it is mentioned here that it is the formation of the lactate then second uh, the fate of the pyruvate is that there is a small formation via pyruvate this is there the third one is the formation of acetyl CoA. You, you are already know that the acetyl CoA is the place where uh, now all the other uh, metabolic pathways are joining, and this acetyl CoA that entering into TCA cycle. And the fourth phase of the pyruvate is that is the conversion into oxaloacetate, and you know oxaloacetate by looking into the that uh, TCA cycle is the place where the protein metabolism also enter and here it is joined it is uh, four fates of the pyruvate one lactate formation second ethanol formation third acetyl CoA formation and fourth oxaloacetate you can count it in your fingers it's very easy now the one is lactate formation, the second is ethanol formation, the third is acetyl CoA formation, and fourth is the oxaloacetate formation. When talking of the particular of lactate, we can now see that uh, the formation of lactate is the major fate of pervade in the lens and the corneas of the eyes kidney medulla testes leukocytes and red blood cells because these are all poorly vascularized or lack of there is lack of mitochondria i repeat it the formation of lactate which is taking place is the major fate of pyruvate in where 
एम्बुलेंस कॉर्नरिया आई किडनी मिडल्ला टेस्टिस रेड ब्लड सेल्स व्हाई बिकॉज दे आर प्योर प्योर दे आर वेरी पुअरली वेस्टराइज और दे दे आर लैक ऑफ माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया when talking of the lactate formation in the muscle during you have noticed that during intense exercise lactate accumulates in the muscles what happens causing a drop in the intracellular ph potentially that is resulting in the cramps you might have seen that while going through severe exercise and like that You feel pain in your pindaliyon mein dard mehsoos karte hain, cramps mehsoos karte hain, and that is due to that is that is the lactate accumulation is there and causing a drop in the intracellular pH, potentially resulting in cramps. Very interesting. You should know how the cramps taking place in the, in the muscles. Much of this lactate eventually diffuses which is formed then that it diffuses into the blood stream and can be used by the liver to make glucose you see chorea lactic acid cycle is here you, you will come to know that also that this lactate via chorea lactic acid cycle then going to the liver and again help in the formation and it forms the glucose when talking what happened in the liver lactate accumulation is there in the liver by weight is either converted to glucose by the process gluconeogenesis you are very familiar with this word gluconeogenesis this word itself is giving its meaning the formation of glucose from the sources other than carbohydrate is known as gluconeogenesis or oxidized in the TCA cycle. I repeat it, in the liver, while weight is either converted to glucose by, by the gluconeogenesis or it is oxidized in the TCA cycle. Heart muscles exclusively oxidize lactate to carbon dioxide and water via the citric acid cycle. I am talking why this particularly the lactate because it is very important and university uh, examiners really ask this question by uh, coming to the paper. There is one thing is regarding the lactate acidosis. Um, it may come, uh, what is the lactate acidosis? Now, we can talk in, uh, about the lactic acidosis like this the concentration of lactate in the plasma is termed as lactic acidosis i repeat it evaluated concentration higher concentration of lactate in the plasma termed lactic acidosis when occurs there when there is collapse of the circulatory system. Very important. Such as in pulmonary embolism, uncontrolled hemorrhages, or when an individual is in shock, lactic acidosis will take place. Now, I have gone through all these things and uh, would like that if you got any question be free to ask me on my uh, that uh, WhatsApp number or in your group. I will be available to answer all those questions. But I think you are all now quite familiar because uh, repeatedly uh, in my lectures and then in group discussions we have been talking on this issue. But anyhow, if again you want to ask anything, you are welcome. I tell you one thing. Never shy to ask questions. I am all you know my habit. I am always available to answer you. My phone is available. My number is available to all of you. Even at night, if you will ask me any question, I'll be there to 
answer you. So don't hesitate in asking question and never hesitate in your life while asking the question because that will be helpful to improve your knowledge.